This episode of Eat the Rules is brought to you by You on Fire. You on Fire is the online group coaching program that I run that gives you a step-by-step way of building up your self-worth beyond your appearance. With personalized coaching from me, incredible community support, and lifetime access to the program so that you can get free from body shame and live life on your own terms. Get details on what's included and sign up for the next cycle at summerinandin.com forward slash you on fire. I'd love to have you in that group. This is Eat the Rules, a podcast about body image, self-worth, anti-dieting and intersectional feminism. I am your host, Summer Inanin, a professionally trained coach specializing in body image, self-worth, and confidence, and the best-selling author of Body Image Remix. If you're ready to break free of societal standards and stop living behind the number on your scale, then you have come to the right place. Welcome to the show. This is episode 178 of Eat the Rolls, and I am interviewing Victoria Wellsby, author, speaker, and body confidence expert about reclaiming the word fat, how being your authentic self and doing things that bring you joy can have a bigger purpose, and about her experience on the BBC documentary, Who Are You Calling Fat? You can find all the links and resources mentioned in this episode at summerinandin.com forward slash 178. Before we began, I want to give a shout out to 73DG who left this awesome review, life changing at 65. Really? I'll be 65 in a few weeks and my whole life has been either dieting or living with the aftermath of failing at dieting. I was attracted to the body image series of this podcast and summer really breaks things down into everyday language. I mean, just imagine not attaching our self-worth to our body's appearance. And we actually hear suggestions on how to do it. Thank you, Summer. It's an act of rebellion from the flyest senior on the block because I'm a good friend, like to draw cartoons, read music, and that's got nothing to do with the scale. Thank you so much, 73DG. I love that review so much. So cool to see someone who's on the flip side of midlife uh, be attracted to this work and want to do this work. And I always say to people, it's just, it's never too late to, to rewire those beliefs and feel better about yourself. So before we jump into this episode, if you haven't already done so, I would so appreciate it if you went to iTunes to leave a review for this podcast. Leaving a review helps others to find this show. And I'll tell you why it's so important. I went into iTunes to look at the top podcasts in the health and fitness categories. Um, I'm listed in alternative health and health and and uh, nutrition, I think as well. And let me tell you, there's so much garbage out there. There's so much fat phobic, oppressive, like just garbage that is going to promote disordered eating and, you know, restrict binge cycle and fat phobia and just all that other crap. And when you leave a review for this show, it helps to kind of like push it up into those spaces and to those ratings so that people see it. So you can do that by heading to iTunes, search for eat the rules, then click ratings and reviews and click to leave a review or give it a rating. So it's not just for my self-esteem, it's really for the greater good. <laughs> And then secondly, you can get the free 10 day body confidence makeover at summer forward slash freebies with 10 steps to take right now to feel better in your body. If you can't spell my name, you can always go to the body and that will take you to all of my stuff. On today's episode is my friend, Victoria Wellsby. She is a world leading expert on body image and confidence, TEDx speaker and bestselling author. She went from being homeless, abused with self-esteem that was achingly low into the courageous fat activist and change maker she is today. Victoria helps people fall in love with themselves and is dedicated to shifting the way society views fat bodies. Normally, Victoria and I have private conversations because we're good friends, but this time <laughs> I'm interviewing her and it's it's awesome. I just always love speaking to her. She has such a good way of talking about these things and just really not giving a shit about what other people think. And I think we could all use a little bit more of that inspiration in our lives. So definitely follow her and I think you will enjoy this interview. You're also going to enjoy her talking about her experience filming a documentary for BBC about fat phobia, which is something I never would do. I would never live in a house with strangers for a week or ho- or 10 days. I can't remember how long she did it for. She talks about it in this episode. But yeah, you hear her kind of behind the scenes experience with that, which is really interesting too. So enjoy this one. Victoria, hey, welcome to the show. Oh, hey, Summer. Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> 
How are you doing? I'm so glad to have you back on the show. You're my buddy too. So, um, you know. Yeah. So I, I forced you to let me come back on. I think it's been like four years since I was on the show. So it's about time that I came back, isn't it? I know. It's, it's true. It's true. I was keeping all of our conversations in secret, but now we can <laughs> Yeah. Why are you hiding me from the world, Summer? God, so rude. <laughs> well, you're one of my favorite people in life and in this work. Uh, but why don't you tell everyone just a little bit about how how you got into this work? Like, how did Fierce Fatty come into fruition? Yeah. So you're one of my favorite people and in life and in work too, oh, thank you. obviously. I just want to say that. So how I got into this line of work was that and how Fierce Fatty came to be, I am a fat person and my whole life I thought that being fat was a moral failing of mine and I had to do everything to try and make up for it and of course try and become thin. Never worked, obviously, <laughs> I'm still fat, but I just was an overachiever in all parts of my life. And I was like, why can't I just become thin? I'm like, I'm, I'm good at everything else. What the heck? You know, what's wrong with me? And one day I came across uh, Reagan Chastain's blog, Dances with Fat. And she was saying, it's okay to be fat. And I was like, no, it fucking isn't. But what? This is new. I've never heard this concept before. And as soon as I realized that actually it is okay to be fat. I was like, I need to fucking tell the world. I need to tell everyone. And so I started coaching and um, I started coaching on how to be confident. And then I realized I really wanted to serve fat people because as a fat person, I knew what it felt like to feel like your body was not okay. And so Fierce Fatty was born and I've been doing it for, gosh, Five years, I think. Oh, my God. About five years. Yeah. yeah. So in, in, in internet years, that means that I'm, I've been doing it for about 40 years. And so you've been doing it even more, longer than me, Summer. So you're, you know, in, in internet years, you've been doing it and you're probably like 80 now. In uh, internet I, years. Yeah, I've been doing it before the internet in internet years. Oh, wow. That's, um, <laughs> That's deep. <laughs> did you invent the internet just so that you could do this? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God, Summer. <laughs> I'm an introvert, and I thought, how can I do this work without having to be amongst people every day? <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, my gosh. Develop I'm the gonna... internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, adding, I'm adding that to your Wikipedia page. Like, found... <laughs> Please yeah. do. So you use the word like fierce fatty, which is, is, is really badass. And, you know, for people listening, they might hear the word fat and think like, Ooh, but that's like a really emotionally charged word. How important was it for you to like reclaim that word and, and, and use it and really own it. And like, you know, is that something that you encourage other people to do too, who, who, who live in larger bodies? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, being called fat before I uh, understood about fat acceptance was literally the worst thing possible. You could call me any word, but to say, hey, you're fat, it would just be like a, a stab in my chest. My heart would sink. It would be so painful that I would do everything I could to avoid anyone even noticing that I was fat and never mind calling me fat. And so that was my relationship with the world at word. And a lot of people feel the same, you know, it's a real insult to a lot of people. And so the fat acceptance community have reclaimed it and said, Hey, you can't use this word to make us feel like shit anymore. We're taking it back. It is now ours. And in that action, we've reclaimed the power of that word. And so now if someone says, Oh, hey, fatty, or hey, you're fat. I'm like, yes, I am fat. Oh my gosh, isn't it amazing? Or, you know, if they're trying to insult me, I'll be like, yeah, well done. You have great observational skills. But if you're living in a bigger body and the word fat just doesn't, doesn't jive with you, then that's fine. Like, you don't have to identify as fat if, if that word is 
really powerful, or painful, or it just doesn't sit with you. There's lots of different words that you could describe your, yourself, like bigger bodied, you know, a larger bodied individual, whatever you want, you know, it's up to you. So I don't go around saying to people, oh, hey, you, hey, fat person, because, you know, a lot of people would be horrified and really offended, which, you know, they shouldn't be because it's a neutral descriptor. But that's the way that our society is, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Did, so. did it take you a while to to like to reclaim the power back from that word and to like own it with with confidence and almost see it as like this is like a you know this is like a superpower this is something that I really you know am this is a part of me. Yes, it was kind of like it felt like and a lot of people have said this before that you have to like reveal to the world that you're fat like you have to come out and say hey. I'm fat and claim that word. And before I felt like I was hiding in plain sight and, you know, didn't didn't claim my identity as someone living in a bigger body. I was always like, no, 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 not me, not me. I'm not fat. And so, yeah, it took time for me to be like, you know what? No, I am fat. And there's nothing wrong with being fat and actually telling the world, hey, I'm fat and not ignoring the fact that I'm fat or trying to disguise my fatness or whatever is super liberating. And, and now it's, it's super fun, especially when I, I meet new people and I, you know, if they ask me about what I do and I'm, as soon as I say that word fat, if I say like, I'm fat or whatever, they're like, Oh no, you're not, you're not fat. That's (laughs) right. I'm like, the last time someone said it to me, I was at my, um, I would uh, go singing and there was a new person in the singing group. And one of my friends was like, oh, Victoria's got this new book out. It's called Fierce Fatty and talks about how she's fat and stuff. And the, the person was like looking at my friend as if to say, what are you saying? And she's, she was like, you're not fat. And I was like, I am. She's like, no, you're beautiful. And I, and then I lifted up my top and I showed her my belly and like grabbed my fat. And I was like, look at all of this fat. I'm fat, aren't I? And she was like, um, yes. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> so what the hell is going on? Yeah, <laughs> so confused. And I was like, I love being fat. There's nothing wrong with being fat. Anyway, um, so, you know, no matter what I, whenever I describe like what I do is I teach um, fat people to love their bodies. I know that everyone is having some type of reaction, whether good or bad, to that one single three letter word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we've, we've met up and you'll, you have the, you have your, your sweatshirt that says fierce fat. It says fierce fatty, right? Like that's what it says. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. 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 Like you just, you know, you're just like, yeah, like this is me and it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so one of the, um, you've done a lot of amazing things, uh, since the last time we spoke, one of them being, your TED talk, which I'll you know circle back to, and then the other one being the BBC documentary that you were a part of. Can you tell everyone a little bit about what that was? What that was about? Yeah. So the BBC approached me and they said that they wanted to do a, a documentary about fat positivity and and sharing fat stories. And uh, what they had was. Eight, nine, nine fat people living in this luxury house in Oxfordshire in the UK for 10 days. And the fat people were had a different range of views on fat bodies. And so one third of the house loved being fat. They were fat positive. Uh, the Another third of the house was extremely fat phobic, hated being fat, dieting, things like that. And then everyone else was kind of somewhere in the middle didn't you know it was a new thing they didn't like their body but they were kind of learning about it and yeah so we spent 10 days together in a house and it was pretty intense and being filmed pretty much 24 hours a day and a lot of different views and it was very challenging for me being someone who was very um I am I know that it's not okay to shame fat people and uh, tell fat people that they're about to spontaneously combust from fatness and all that type of stuff. So it was very hard for me to navigate a lot of conversations, but also spending time with fat positive people for a whole, you know, 10 days was so incredible. So it was a very unique situation. Like, did you feel because you, you were among like quite a few people that were fat phobic that that started to like shake your confidence and, and your beliefs? A hundred percent. So not my actual confidence uh, in regards to is my fat body OK? Because, uh, you know, I think that I'm not my body. I'm, I mean, you know, my worth is is separate. I'm worthy as a human being. But just starting to be like, am I right? Like, 
is this like am I what you know starting to believe like maybe I should be scared that I'm about to get type 2 diabetes and maybe I should start changing my behavior and, and things like that and a week after I left the house it that had kind of washed away from my brain and I was like wow that just goes to show someone who does this for a living. I have done this for years and I am, I love science and I know what shame and stigma does to fat people. Spending time with raging fat phobes changed, made me question the way that I was thinking. And so what does that mean for people who don't have solid opinions about how it's okay to be fat and how difficult that is for them to change their opinions into being fat positive in the first place and how easily it would be to be influenced by people who are like, but you know, fat is disgusting, but you know that you're about to die from being fat. Like it was really remarkable for me to see that happening in my brain. Yeah. And it just goes to show like how, how much your environment can influence your, your beliefs, whether that's like the messages that you're being exposed to on a daily basis via um, social media or like the, you know, the people that you live with, if you have, you know, family or friends that are, that are really fat phobic, like if it can shake your beliefs, like I can't imagine, like I can imagine how much it would, like how much harder it would be for someone to really, you know, change the, the beliefs that they have about bodies and, and health and, and worthiness when they're constantly, you know, being bombarded with, with those messages in, in, in an environment like that. Yeah, absolutely. And and um, another thing was that we didn't have access to the internet or our, our devices or anything like that. And so there was no moments where I could go on the internet and be like, oh, no, yeah, no, of course. But I did have those few fat positive people. And so spending time with them, us being like, whoa, <laughs> those beliefs of theirs are a bit weird, aren't they? Um, so, yeah, if you don't have... Uh, a respite if you don't have people you can talk to or you don't follow people on social media who talk about this stuff too then yeah oh that's difficult really difficult yeah how did, and and like you know looking back on it are you glad that you did the show or do you have any like you know regrets or doubts about it I guess I don't know I go 50 50 for this because I wanted to go in there and perfectly represent the the body positive community the fat positive community and show what a wonderful thing it is and show how it could be a great solution for those who hate their bodies and and dieting all that time and I don't think that because I'm a human being, I perfectly did that. And so being hard on myself, being like, oh, well, if you said that one thing and if you didn't do that. And also there was times where the for sensational value, there was some times where the editing, you know, they they they'd show me a lot of the times eating cake or eating crisps or things like that. And then they'd show the the uh, the people who didn't like being fat eating a salad when we'd all eaten cake and salad and, you know, things like that. But also it was a unique and incredible experience. And the people who were fat positive that I met have, are still my friends and we still are in contact really regularly. Um, um, so yes and no, I'd probably do things differently, but still do it. Yeah. Well, it's so much of it's out of your control. I think like they, they probably, you know, they have hours and hours and hours of, of footage and then they chop it up any way they want. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. So much of it's out of your control. Like I've heard you speak so many times and just know, you know, that you are really brilliant on this topic and very good at coaching people and communicating these things. So I have a hard time imagining it being any other way unless it was just subject to the cutting room floor. Yeah, 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 exactly. So like one example is that um, I was talking about like the complicated um, idea of health and how you can't be completely 100% unhealthy, well, unless you're dead. But, you know, health is a spectrum, right? And we, we don't arrive, of the, arrive at this destination of 100% healthy. And it's super complicated. And what makes up health is uh, way more than the food you eat. And if you exercise or don't, it's just a very complicated subject. And anyway, and so uh, one of the things I said was, you know, a part of this is I don't believe in health in the way that we view it, because we view it very black and white. And so out of all of that, what we get is a snippet of, I don't believe in health. 
and no context. Oh, wow. So, so they're like, it makes it like, look, look at this, like, fat person. She doesn't even understand about health. No wonder she's probably so unhealthy and she she's so unintelligent. And, and, you know, you miss out all of that nuance that comes with something a bit longer, which they couldn't put into the show because it would be take too long. And it's more interesting if you have someone saying something like, I don't believe in health, you know, that's way more interesting and controversial. And so, you know, things like that, I'm like, mm. but you know, what can you do? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you handled it so well in terms of, you know, just, you know, doing that experience. I mean, I, I don't think I would be brave enough to do that experience. That, that kind of really, you know. why not? I wouldn't stay 10 days in a house with people I don't know, because I, I, I think that would be so bad for my mental health. I'm such a princess when I sleep. I need a white noise <laughs> machine, a fan, a body pillow. I need the room at a certain temperature. I need like blackout shades. Like, and I have really bad, like I have a lot of trouble sleeping. If I don't have these things, I don't sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't think I would sleep. It would just be, and so that's like, honestly, like probably no, one of the number one reasons more than anything else. Because, and then if I don't sleep, like I am a really distraught human being, <laughs> but yeah. I would find it very, dra- as an introvert, I would find that it, like so incredibly draining. Like I, oh, I yeah. I've done three reality TV shows this is like fun fact back in my twenties and, and like just, the, they were one day shoots and like, I have never been more drained in my life than those days. So I just can't imagine doing it for 10 days straight. It's so intense. And you, you like, you see the things that they do to make you on edge, like the sleeping thing, because you know, you're all sharing rooms and, and they want you up early in the morning. And then they, um, you go to bed late, you're filming all day. And then the film crew want to wash, wash, um, film you brushing your teeth. And I'm sure if they could film you taking a shit, they would like, (laughs) they're like, Yes. everywhere and co- you know you don't have a moment no downtime like I I brought I brought three fucking books with me thinking that I was going to be lounging by the pool just reading these books like they <laughs> they never even came out like not once because it was constant as soon as you opened your eyes you have someone knock on the door saying can we mic you up and you're like what so you know yeah okay you know and yes. um and then, uh, you know, the the producers would be like, oh, well, so-and-so said this. And what do you think about that? And isn't so-and-so really a, you know, a mean person? And like, and so you're constantly trying to be like, well, you know, diplomatic. And then, uh, yeah. So we had a few people in the house actually throw massive tantrums and um, almost walk out and all sorts of things. Uh, yeah. So, you know, because they want, they want drama, right. They want people to be like, screw you. And, but it never happened. Like we all got on pretty well considering, you know, people were against me as a human being because I had a fat body, but they didn't have any of that. And so they kind of had to manufacture it a little bit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, anyone after 10 days would probably just be a little bit, not themselves. Right. (laughs) 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 Staying in a, staying in an environment like that. Well, so like, you know, one of, one of the things that you did there was like the, the stand for self-love, which was similar to uh, the Amy Pence Brown stand for self-love, which involves you standing outside in a bikini and uh, blindfolded and having well, actually, why don't you say what the sign said and what you had people do? Yeah, so um, this is something that is kind of the, something that activists do. And so um, a different group did it before Amy. And then Amy made it really famous. Amy Pence Brown made it really famous when she stood in the market in Idaho. And so then I asked Amy, can I do it in, in this program? And so what we did is I invited It was one of our activities. I invited everyone in the house and I said, hey, we're going to go to um, the city centre, Oxford city centre. So very big city in the UK and stand in our swimsuits and blindfold ourselves and have a sign in front of us. And the sign says, I am standing for anyone who's ever felt like their body wasn't okay. If you think that all bodies are are good, then come and draw a heart on my body. And then we all stood with our um, hands out with pens in our hands and um, people came and drew drew on our body. And so me, another fat positive person did it. And also someone who hated her body did it too. So it was three of us. And we, we stood there for an hour and 
so I don't normally live in the UK. Oh, I'm British, but I live in Canada normally. And so I hadn't lived in the UK for uh, 10 years before that. And my memories of the UK is very kind of, you know, like, fuck you, fatty and, you know, mean people. And we were stood just to the side of a McDonald's. And so I was like, probably we're going to get, you know, McDonald's thrown on us, thrown at us. We're going to get at least a few people being like, yeah, yeah, whales or whatever. But it was really, really positive. Like before I could even get my blindfold on, some a nurse came up to me and said, can I put your blindfold on for you? She did my blindfold up and then she came and drew the first heart on my body and was said, this is so important that you're doing this. And from a nurse, so someone in the healthcare um, industry, that was really powerful. And I couldn't see the rest of the people that came up, obviously blindfolded, but um, I there was a, a mother that came up with um, her um, with children and said, this is so important for my children to see that all bodies are good. And we had people saying, you know, I have an eating disorder and seeing your body is really powerful for me. All sorts of people. And by the time we took our blindfolds off, we were absolutely covered in in hearts. And no one threw a single McDonald's milkshake at us. It was amazing. So uh, it was really nice to see that even though people are fat phobic, people are also wrestling with the idea that maybe we shouldn't shame fat bodies and maybe we need to start looking at this differently. Now, there were, of course, people who didn't come and draw on our bodies and the filming afterwards, you could see uh, the reactions and there were negative reactions from the public. But on the whole, it was very positive. So um, that was a really cool experience. Yeah, yeah, so cool. And so, you know, like a lot of people would would sort of look at that and be like, uh, I could never do that. Like that, you know, I was <laughs> like, I would be so afraid of what people would think or or say about me to put on a bikini and, and do something like that. And in the same way, like you, you know, you, you do that a lot. Like you put on a bikini and you don't give a shit. Like we went to the pool here in, in Vancouver. Uh, I guess it was a few years ago, right? Like, I don't even think I was, I'd say, yeah, yet. it was a couple, yeah. yeah, it was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like you had me film you like just not giving a shit in a bikini in this like massive outdoor public pool. Like you had like a pool noodle that you were like dancing with and, you know, so what do you say to people who are like, I could never do that. Like, like, how do you, how do you do that? How do you overcome that fear of judgment and just, and just not give a shit? Yeah, so that was so fun doing that that in, in Kit's pool. We should do that like, again when you I come know, back. Totally. It was so funny. Um, I must send you a link to the video because it's just people love that one because I'm just behaving like a dick, like you say, just wrestling with a pool noodle. Yeah, and and that location too was important for me because it's kind of like a posery type pool, right? Like when I first came to Vancouver, I, when I first came to Vancouver, I remember going to Kit's Beach, seeing that pool, and saying, "I can never go to that pool." never mind go to that pool and wear a bikini a red string bikini I could never go to that pool because I'm not the type of person who goes there like it's you know uh lardy da kits type people who are thin and athletic and all that type of stuff so I can totally understand if someone says I could never do that because I thought that too like I wouldn't even go to the pool never mind do all this stuff but I came to the understanding and kind of What's the word that I'm I'm trying to think of? The not resigned, but yeah, like the understanding that people will always judge me, always, no matter what I do. And the same for everyone, right? Like right now, both of us, whoever's listening to this podcast, both of us are being judged, some negatively, some positively, some in the middle. And that's all okay. It doesn't mean that you or I or anyone else, um, their worth is lowered because of other people's opinions. Something when I was doing my TED talk, I, I can't remember who told it to me, but it, it's just stuck in my head that when I was going to do my TED talk, I was wrestling with the ending of my TED talk. The ending of my TED talk is I take my clothes off on stage and dance in my bikini, obviously, because that's all I want to do in life is dance in my bikini. And so I, even to a couple of days before, I was wrestling whether whether I should do it or sh I should not do it because it was so inappropriate to, you know, 
dance in your bikini on a TED stage. I should keep it more professional or, you know, but this is how I want to express my joy. And, you know, and so wrestling with that. And and someone said to me, 10 percent of the audience is going to love you no matter what. 10 percent of the audience is going to hate you no matter what. And 80 percent are going to fall somewhere in the middle. And so do you want to do something that is authentically you and have that 10 percent of people love you for the real version of you? Or do you want to not do it to not offend that 10 percent of people who might be offended and keep them happy? But you're not really being your authentic self. And so I thought, fuck, no. I'm going to get you know my floppy tits out and just shake them on stage. It's going to be amazing. And that is my thought when we go to Kitts Beach and I, you know, roll around in my bikini is that, yes, there's people there being like, what the fuck is she doing? But what's more important for me is that there might be one person there that is like, oh, my God, this is incredible. Look at that fat person over there. She doesn't give a fuck. If she doesn't give a fuck, then maybe I shouldn't give a fuck. Like, what? why am I, you know, not wearing my bikini when she's wearing a bikini? And I feel like going out and dancing in my bikini, I'm very kindly giving people the education of seeing my fat body living joyfully. And so, you know, when with that, there's going to be people that don't like me and there's going to be people people that do like me, but I won't die if someone doesn't like me, right? I won't, I won't die if someone says, you're fat or that's inappropriate or you're too fat to dance or whatever. I might hurt my feelings, might not, but I will still survive. And what's more important, me to express myself authentically or for me to live small so that that one dickhead from school that I used to go, you know, go to school with doesn't say, oh, LOL, she's fat. Like, fuck that guy and fuck anyone else who is judging fat bodies negatively because, you know, it's stuff that they have to work on, right? It's got nothing to do with me. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's so important. And I am, you know, I'm sensing like se- the, the, the uh, I hate to say the word motivation, but that's the only word that's coming to my mind right now. But just having the motivation of being a role model to other people is powerful, I think. Like, okay, that can, you know, if, if, if I do this, then other people are going to, it gives other people permission to do it too. And I think that sometimes doing stuff for a bigger purpose is also helpful to enable you to kind of overcome that fear of judgment. Yeah, exactly. And I I, I always think if I had seen someone like me when I was young, what type of impact would that have on me? And at the end of my TEDx talk, I was on stage and uh, a guy came up with his young daughter, I presume it was his daughter. And he said, she wants to have a picture with you because she wants to be like you when she's older. And I was just like, shut the fuck up. I'm dead. This is amazing. Oh my God. And to think that she saw me doing this thing and she was like a little girl and she knew, she learned in that, in that moment that, you know, fat people are, you know, happy and dance and do all the things that straight size people do. And, um, yeah. So I don't want to, my view is I don't want to fuck up other fat people by, you know, being like, oh, my fat body is disgusting. You know, I feel like it's it's my responsibility to say, hey, it's okay to be fat and just live live like I believe it because I do believe it. Yeah, and like I mean, you've been faced with with criticism because I've you know I've, I know there's been negative comments on like the the video on your TED talk and and whatnot. How do you manage that? Like emotion? Like I know you said yes, there's hurt feelings, but like what are what are some ways that help you to to move through that that um the way that that makes you feel yeah it's so complicated right because you know I want to be detached from praise and criticism and just be like you know whatever but sometimes I do it makes me feel sad and so I I to begin with when I first started being more visible online and people were like oh you're fat um I was like I'm going to tell them to fuck off. And so I'd be like, fuck off, whatever. And so then they'd be like, oh, this is great. We're getting a rise out of her. And they'll be like, oh, you're really fat. And then I thought, okay, well, that's not working. And so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to very gently educate them. And so, you know, I'd say, oh, hey, by the way, it's not okay for you to, you know, abuse with people on the internet. And they'd be like, oh, we're getting a rise out of her. And, you know, uh, then they'd be like, oh, you're fat. 
And and eventually I was like, you know what, I'm just going to ignore them. And so now I'm at the point where I don't, as soon as I see a comment that it's, that is using an O word or is in like, obviously from a troll, I just stop reading it. I don't try to get to the end of the sentence. I just delete it. And I don't go on, I don't look at the the comments on my, um, you, that, that video, my TEDx talk, because obviously there's a shit ton of awful things, but also there's a shit ton of positive things. If I ever get messages from people, uh, sometimes I have someone else go through my inbox and delete those messages so I don't have to see them because I need to protect my mental health. And the fact that I'm getting these messages, people saying, oh, you shouldn't be fat and happy, but obviously in in a much meaner way, just says that I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing good work, right? I still have work to do because if everyone was just like, well, yeah, obviously, like who wants to be fat phobic? That's really sucky. Then I'd be like, oh shit, well, I I need to get a new profession. You know, I need to, because everyone's got the memo, but not everyone's got the memo. And that means I will always get, you know, trolls and all that type of stuff. So I just try and protect my mental health as much as possible. But sometimes I will accidentally read a comment and then I'll be like, I'm having feelings. And other times I'm just like, fuck you. And, you know, other times I'm just like, whatever, I don't care. So yeah, I'm a human, I'm a human being and, you know, just try and protect my health, my mental health as much as I can. Yeah, it's, it's tough. But it, it's one of those things that like, you know, to you, you obviously want your message to go far and wide, you want to reach a lot of people. And in order to do that, you're going to have a whole bunch of bad fish that come in too. And so to see that as like, okay, if I'm reaching these, you know, the negative 10%, as you said, then, you know, you're obviously reaching a lot more people in a positive way, which I think is really important to remember. But that doesn't take away the, the, the hurt from having that kind of criticism. Yeah, yeah. And, and on the other side, I get so many positive messages. Honestly, the, the positive messages, it's like 95% of the message messages I get. And so many people saying, like, you've changed my life and, you know, wonderful things like that. So, um, you know, I obviously get the benefits of, of being visible as well, which is really nice. So I have a question, like just in terms of, you know, we, we, you're talking about like kind of like online criticism and stuff, but what about in, you know, real life? So what's your advice for people who are faced with criticism or judgment for their size, you know, in particular, maybe from their family or friends? Yeah. So this is a really big one. A lot of uh, people are very anxious and rightly so about the judgments that they're going to get pe- from people in their lives, family, friends, strangers, the doctor, everything. And so there's lots of different ways that you can deal with this. I personally, my favorite way to deal with this is boundaries and boundaries. Like who wants to set boundaries? It's so, it's so annoying. Like why do I have (laughs) to grow as a human being and communicate better, but letting people know that it's not okay for them to talk to you in certain ways or talk shit about fat people. And that can be hard, especially you know, like we said at the beginning, if you're surrounded by raging fat phobes, you know, who hate fat bodies and think dieting is the best thing ever. And so it can be really hard for you to be like, oh, hey, mum, I know that you've been talking about dieting for the last 7,000 years, but do you mind not talking about dieting? That can be really hard. And so if you're not at that stage where you can do that, you can protect your um, mental health in other ways. And so removing yourself from the from the situation, like going into a different room or putting your headphones in or saying a, a quiet fuck you in your head, whatever you can to protect your mental health. But eventually, as you go along in this process of uh, becoming more confident in the idea that it's OK to be fat, you'll be able to say to people who care about you, hey, I'm trying to work on loving my body. Can you help me um, by not mentioning fat as a negative? And, you know, you might lose a lot of people in your life. Like I know that I did because a lot of people couldn't handle the idea of not being a, a fat phobe. And so they didn't survive this journey. But a lot of people did who I thought previously, there's no way that they're going to accept or get on board with fat positivity. And that was me judging them negatively because they did. And some people in my family who, you know, had dieted all their lives turn around and now are the biggest advocates for fat bodies. And it's 
magical when that happens. But of course, it's not always going to happen like that. But yeah, yeah, yeah so important to mm-hmm. protect your mental health and incorporate ba- boundaries as a form of self care. Yes. And and boundaries, honestly, boundaries is an act of love. Like a lot of people don't want to set boundaries because they don't want people to not like them and they don't want to offend people. But if you're secretly sat there thinking, I fucking hate you and everything you're saying, you're not giving them the chance to get really close to you as a human being because you're not voicing what the issue is. And so they're missing out on getting to know you and getting to be close to you and the authentic version of you because you're not speaking up and saying, this is not okay for me. So being able to set boundaries really is a gift for everyone in your life and for you. Mm-hmm. Totally, totally. Um, so, so, so one of the last things I wanted to ask you, just the, the you know, like I, I've just kind of heard from people, and I'm sure some people think is, you know, like, my life would just be easier if I was thinner, or my life would just be better if I was thinner. How do you how do you respond to that? Well, the the yes, yes, that your life probably would in some ways be easier if you were thinner, especially if you're living in a super fat body. If you're living in a larger body than what society is made for, if you happened to magically become thin one day, then you would um, step into a more privileged identity, which comes with a ton of benefits. If you're already thin, you know, if you got thinner, you probably wouldn't be seeing that much benefits. But um, so acknowledging that, like, yeah, life might be easier if you happen to magically get thin. But can we do it? And should we do it? As we know, and you've probably established millions of times already on the podcast, that it's very unlikely that anyone can um, change their body size for any period of time. And so we can acknowledge that, yes, life might be easier. I might see more privilege, like I might fit into a seat better. I might be able to go on that roller coaster or or I might be able to date more people if I had a smaller body. But is it possible to get there? And if it is possible to get there, what are you sacrificing? Are you sacrificing your mental health? Are you sacrificing your physical health? The the thing and the thing with like like with dating is I always love to think about the people who won't date me because I'm fat. I'm so pleased that they won't because they're outing themselves as, as a bigot. And so I'm like, thank you very much. Like, because imagine if I was a, a straight size person and I started dating someone and then became fat and then it turned out that they were a bigot, then it's like, oh shit, I've wasted X amount of years with a bigot. But, um, you know, so there's some kind of like fringe benefits of of uh, dealing with, with um, people who genuinely love you and like you because of you, not because of the size of your body. But yeah, so I'm rambling, acknowledging that yes, it can be easier, but can we get there? And um, at what cost? Yeah, yeah, no, it's important, right? And I think that, you know, to to sort of like, look at your present life and say, like, do I want to make the best of what is here now, even if it might be easier in a different scenario or situation? Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the thing about dating relationships, it's like, it's like filtering out the assholes. It's like, (laughs) (laughs) do you, do you, are you on dating sites at all? Yes, I, I kind of am like, I'll, I'll be on for a bit and then I'll be like, fuck this. And then like go off and then be like, oh, actually I want some dick. And then be like, go back and yeah, (laughs) on and off. Do you, do you put I'm fat in your dating profile? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I think I put fatter in real life. I think um, okay. I 100% I mentioned the word fat. Yeah. Yeah. I was just curious. <laughs> yeah. Which ma- honestly, it makes people uncomfortable because they don't want to identify with dating a fat person. They want to identify with dating a curvy person, a voluptuous person, because curvy is sexy. Fat is is not seen as sexy in their eyes. And so a lot of a lot of men will be like, but you're not fat, you're curvy, you're, you know, you're thick, you've just got all the blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, motherfucker, I'm fat. Like, deal with it. <laughs> like, I'm fat. Like, chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's tough, though. Like, I, you know, I, that's one thing I think a lot of people struggle with is is like this, this idea of, of dating and especially the way it is now being online and kind of like, 
you know, just sort of having to go off images and things like that. Yeah, it's so like just based in misogyny and patriarchy and, you know, because I personally, I, I, I am attracted to people with because of their personality. And so, you know, I have a hard time because I'm like, I don't, you know, people don't fit out their profile. I'm like, why don't you, I don't care about your picture. I just want to know about your personality. And, and then I've got a, an amazing profile. Like it's funny. It's like quirky. I even give them something to say to me to break the ice. And then they don't read my profile, profile at all. And they just look at my pictures and they're just like, hey, sexy, hey, beautiful. Like want to see a picture of my dick or whatever. And I'm like, oh. I've just given you some gold in that profile and you've ignored it. Mm. Uh, It's frustrating. Frustrating. (laughs) Uh, We'll do another episode on dating. (laughs) I've got so many dating stories. It's so entertaining. Oh, my God. (laughs) I know you do. Um, Well, we've got to wrap this one up. Where can people find more of you? Uh, They can go to fiercefatty.com and find me on Instagram, fierce.fatty, and everywhere else is fiercefatty. Come around my house call me up do whatever you want yes and like go and check out your instagram stories where you show all the sheep and where you live right now it's pretty cool yeah because i'm in ireland at the moment and so yeah there's lots of sheep around when you come when you come back here i'll dress up as a sheep and you can film me (laughs) 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 what will i film you doing what will you be doing when i'm dressed as a sheep um well maybe you can you know shear me or something i don't know shave shave. Oh. yeah yeah, yeah shear yeah yeah because yeah. i've been using some shears while i've been here so yeah i'm a, a dab hand with shears yeah okay done you can give me a bottle of milk you know yeah i don't oh. know mm. yeah <laughs> okay done (laughs) all right on that note thank you so much for being here it was great talking to you again i'm so glad to um yeah have you back on the show thank you sama you're the best rock on uh it's always so fun interviewing victoria normally we just have secret conversations so it was fun to actually hit the record on one of our conversations (laughs) And have me ask her all the questions. You can find all the links and resources mentioned, including a link to Victoria's Body Love Roadmap at summerinandin.com forward slash 178. And I just want to say thank you so much for all the kind feedback on the name change of this podcast and and some of the feedback from the first episode as well. I really appreciate it. Uh, some people just messaged me saying they were excited that the podcast is back and that they love the name and that was was really meaningful to me. Obviously, I do this for you. (laughs) And so it's really nice when I feel like I'm heard. (laughs) So thank you. I really appreciate you listening here today. And I will talk to you soon. Rock on. I'm Summer Inanen, and I want to thank you for listening today. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Summer Inanen. And if you haven't yet, go to Apple Podcasts, search Eat the Rules, and subscribe, rate, and review this show. I would be so grateful. Until next time, rock on. Rock on.